Father, we thank, Father, you, for we thank you for the gift of that baby, of that in, baby a in a manger that Lord changed, Lord changed all of humanity, humanity. that changed, that changed world, world history. We thank you, we God, thank that, you, God that, that you so love that you gave, that you gave us, us the gift of your Son, Jesus. Jesus. We are a we thankful, are a thankful grateful and grateful people this Christmas, this Christmas Eve, Eve morning. morning. Bless your name. Bless your name. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you from uh, myself, from the staff here at, at the church. Let me just say how uh, appreciative I am, first off, for the, the uh, offering that you guys received last Sunday for me and for my family. Thank you so much for your generous giving. Thank you for the, the gifts that have been given to us and for the delicious candies that uh, many of you have have made and the cards and the words of encouragement and, and all of those things. We are just so, so thankful to be able to pastor such a wonderful uh, church family. And we love each and every one of you and wish you a very Merry Christmas from our home to yours. So for just a few moments, I know we've all got lots of things we're going to be doing today and tomorrow for the Christmas season, but I tell you what, we really need to take just a moment and celebrate the reason for the season. Amen. So I want to take just a few moments and talk to you on a, uh, a thought, a title uh, for this morning's message that I have called an indescribable gift. Now today is December the 24th. It is Christmas Eve or the day before what many people would claim is the most wonderful day of the year. It's the day when families gather together, will share food and fond memories. The day when children will wait with great anticipation. The day when some grown men, some pastors will wait with great anticipation to see what presents have been left under the tree. And, and uh, those of us of the Christian faith, this is the day when we pause to reflect on the greatest gift that has ever been given to mankind, the gift of that baby that was placed in a manger, wrapped with love, heralded by angels, serenaded by seraphim, worshipped by kings, hallowed by shepherds, proclaimed by the heavens, received by the earth, and given unto man by which we must be saved. The eternal Son of the living God, the greatest gift of all, was sent to earth with one mission, folks, and that was to seek and to save the lost. I was reminded of what the angel told Joseph. And he said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the one that is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and she will give him the name. Why, Jesus? Because he will save his people from their sins. Is anybody thankful for that today? That Jesus came to save us from our sins. Praise God. How do you describe such a gift? How do you define a gift like that? How do you depict with words a gift like the Son of God being born of a woman subject to the law? To redeem us who were under the law so that then God might adopt us back into his family as the children of God. Man, I believe that's why Paul said it is an indescribable gift. And that's where I want to take our text from this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 15. Just these few simple words that Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, said, Thanks be to God. For his indescribable gift. Now let me, let me ask you a question today. How many of you have ever received a gift that was beyond description? Anybody? How many of you have I've ever got a gift that was just so touching and so moving that words simply were not befitting of its glory? I, I saw in the news just this past week, I believe, where a, a uh, gentleman went into a little diner. 
And he had a meal, and it was about $40, I think, or something like that. And, and when he signed his credit card slip, he wrote the amount, including the tip, for $3,040. And he said to take that money, and he wrote on a little receipt, to split it among all the staff in the diner. And he said the reason he wrote such a uh, generous uh, gift or, or tip that day was because his mother had worked at a diner similar to that when he was a child, and it reminded him of his mom, and he wanted to bless those folks. I'm sure probably some of those staff folks at that little diner walked out of there that day and said, now that is an indescribable gift. A friend of mine has a, a lot of things on layaway, had a lot of things on layaway at the Walmart in, in Galax or Hillsville down that way. She went to go pay on those items just this past week. Went to the cashier and said, I need to pay on my, my layaway. He looked it up and he said, uh, you don't know anything on your layaway. She said, that, that can't be right because I, I owe hundreds of dollars. All of my children's toys and things like that I've, I've put on layaway. And I, I owe hundreds of dollars that you, you need to check again. And he said, well, a gentleman came in this week and anonymously asked, what is the total amount that is owed on layaway at this Walmart? And the amount was over $5,000. And he wrote a check. And paid for everybody's layaway. I thought, man, I wish I'd have laid some stuff away at Walmart and Gayla. Now, now, my friend, let me tell you what, she said that was an indescribable gift. Anonymously. Don't even know who the gentleman is. But came in and paid off all those folks' layaway. Have you ever watched Good Morning America? So if you watch that show a little bit, maybe it comes on uh, early morning. They did a segment a couple of years ago where they described what they said were some extraordinary gift ideas. So men who might still be shopping for tomorrow, here's your couple of ideas. They even said that these things were indescribable. That's how they labeled them. The first thing that they talked about was an 18-carat solid gold toilet. True story. And if you're thinking about maybe picking one of those up for the love of your life, it will only set you back about $2 million for a solid gold, 18-karat gold toilet. Another gift idea that they talked about in that little segment was a car. But not just any car. It was the Jaguar 220 which at the time, now a couple of years ago, retailed for a small amount of a little over $500,000 for that pretty little car right there. The third extraordinary gift idea that they talked about was a small little eight-ounce can of car wax. It was imported, some kind of the ultimate, I guess, luxury car wax, and that little eight-ounce can was only about $3,000. But I suppose if you can afford a $500,000 car, then you can wax it with $3,000, I guess. And then the last thing that they talked about, maybe for the baby in your life, was a pure platinum pacifier. That just get oh, Gabby wants one. <laughs> Bless her heart. That just gives new meaning to that phrase, born with a silver pacifier in your mouth, <laughs> right? $85,000 for that little pure platinum pacifier. As I, as I thought about all the, the gifts that I've ever given in my life, I thought there's only one that I can think of, that I can remember anyway, that's ever left the recipient of the gift that I gave, speechless. For they did not have any words. And that was on December the 30th, 2004, when I got down on one knee in front of 2,500 people at the Dixie Stampede in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and I offered my wife the gift of me. True story. She didn't have the words. 
And I, I'm not sure if that was excitement or reluctance. <laughs> but either way, it left her speechless for a few moments. But finally, she was able to utter the word, yes. And I'm glad that she did. But, you know, e- even uh, a gift like that, an extraordinary gift such as myself, it, it, still, it still was able to be described she could finally find the right descriptive words to, to put around that gift because she started calling her friends and started calling her family and telling folks what had happened. And see, even all the, the aforementioned items that I've talked about, the toilet and the car and the wax and the pacifier, all those things, as extravagant and excessive as they may be, can I tell you this? They are not indescribable. We might have a hard time coming up with the words to define gifts like that. But can I tell you who won't have a hard time? That's the manufacturers, the people that have made those things. Because they're going to spend a lot of money. They're going to spend a lot of time into the uh, uh, talking about and the advertisement of these gifts and these items to make you think that you can't live another day without them. I'm surprised I've made it 37 years without a golden toilet in my house. I mean, they want you to to believe that. Every human gift is describable by somebody. Matter of fact, that's what Paul's doing when he writes this letter to the church at Corinth. He is describing their gift. What gift? Well, this church had actually taken up an offering. They were sending a monetary gift to the poor Christians in Jerusalem who were struggling and having a hard time. And Paul is describing their gift. He describes the the way that they have given. He defines the way that they are going to receive uh, sparingly, bountifully, based on how you give. And then he depicts how their gift is not only going to help the folks in Jerusalem, but it's going to result in thanksgiving to God. He describes this gift that they've given in detail. But then Paul shifts focus. He shifts the focus from an earthly gift to a heavenly gift. He shifts the focus to a a gift that that simply cannot be described or be defined. He begins to focus on the grace of God that is displayed in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ as a baby, born in Bethlehem's manger, whose name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And he said, that, my friend, is a gift that is simply indescribable. Another translation, as I read that passage, 2 Corinthians 9, 15, some other translation said God's gift was too wonderful for words, that it was unspeakable, that his gift was inexpressible. One translation said his gift was priceless. I couldn't help but think about that song the choir sings from time to time that says, your righteousness is like the mighty mountain." Your justice is deeper than the sea. Your priceless love was poured out for me. You shed your blood and you died for me. You gave your life for me. How priceless and how precious is your unfailing love. How do you put a price tag on God's love when there's nothing that can separate you from it? How do you measure the depth of God's grace when it's by His grace that we are saved through faith? How do you put into words the profound and fathomless nature of God's goodness that he would so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would just believe in him that they would never perish but could have everlasting life. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 11 verse number 33. He said, oh the depth of the riches of the wisdom, the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways are past finding out. He is simply indescribable. The Greek word that Paul used in this passage translates to mean it's not able to be described exhaustively. One commentary said it like this, the word Paul used signified that this gift cannot be recounted, narrated, or told. It implies a story that is beyond all telling. A story that again and again calls forth amazement, wonder, and praise. I had a, a 
preacher that I knew asked me one time, he said, how many times can you tell the same old Christmas and Easter story? But can I tell you something, folks? I could tell it every day for the rest of my life, and then I would tell it one more time because when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I could praise him all day long, praise God. The Message Bible Put that scripture like this. Thank God for this gift. No language can praise it enough. And I'm here to tell you, my friend, that's the truth. Every time I think about that baby born in a manger, when I think about the reason that he came to earth, and that was to take my black heart, stick it in red blood, and make it come out white as snow, I can't help but praise him. I can't help but thank him. I can't help but help but bless him for that baby that was born in Bethlehem's manger. I think there's probably at least three reasons why Paul would say that this gift is indescribable. And the first one would be because of his nature. His nature. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And you will call him Emmanuel, which means God with God. Us. Folks, how do you describe Jesus? How do you describe a baby born of a virgin? How do you describe God wrapped in flesh? How do you describe God here with us? How do you describe God who is all powerful? How do you describe that which is spirit? How do you describe that which is eternal? How do you describe the indescribable? Paul says we can't, at least not with our vocabulary, because words just aren't adequate enough to define, dictate, or describe the magnitude of the glory of God. You know, even the the wisest of men have tried and failed. The Council of Chalcedon in 451 A.D. described him like this. Perfect in Godhead and in manhood. Truly man of reasonable, rational soul and body. Consubstantial, coessential with the Father according to the manhood. In all things like unto us without sin. Begotten before all ages of the Father according to the Godhead. And in these latter times for us and for our salvation. Born of the Virgin Mary and of the Mother of God. According to the manhood. One and the same Christ. Son, Lord. Only begotten to be acknowledged in two natures. Inconfusedly. Unchangeably. Indivisibly. Inseparably. And the distinction of natures being by no means taken away by the union. But rather the property of each nature being preserved. Did you understand a word I just said? Me neither. That is the great theological minds of humanity trying their best to describe the indescribable. I think that's why the psalmist proclaimed, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. His nature is indescribable. Another reason probably that Paul would have said this gift is indescribable is his intention. John 3, 17 tells us this. God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world. That's a good place to shout right there. Sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him through Christ, through that baby born in Bethlehem's manger, through him we might be saved. You know, Jesus could have been sent on behalf of God Almighty to convict and condemn because that's what we deserved. Don't get so high and mighty. That's what you deserved. We deserve death. We deserved punishment. The wages of sin, the Bible says, is death. That was your price and my price to pay. But he sent his son 
not to condemn us, but to save us. We were the enemies of God is what the Bible describes us as. But the Lord showed his indescribable intention that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God looked down at a sin-sick world, and you know what he knew? He knew our greatest need was not for more wealth. Our greatest need was not for better schools. Our greatest need was not for even a, a better governmental system. But our greatest need was for a Savior. And that's why the angel told the shepherds, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Thank God that his intention from the manger to the cross was to save us. It was to redeem us. It was to restore us back to a right relationship with his Father. Through him, you and I, we have the privilege to once again be called the children of God. And you know what's even more amazing about God's intention is that he sent his son not out of obligation, not out of compulsion, but out of sheer love for you and I. That's what 1 John 3, 1 tells us. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. You know, we're, we're going to exchange some gifts today, tomorrow. Maybe you've already given some, maybe a few days from now as we travel. Gifts will be given. But we give those gifts out to folks who have some sort of claim on us. Right? Because we give gifts to our family members because they're our family members. We give gifts to friends because they're our friend and because they've maybe perhaps given a gift to us and we don't want to be that guy that forgot his friend at Christmas, right? You know, even when we give gifts to folks that are less fortunate, we feel some sort of obligation to humanity. But do you know what God owed us? Nothing. He owed us nothing. But he gave his son, he sent his son with a mission to go, to cross, to, to die, to shed his blood. He knew when he was born in that manger that the cross was in his future. He sent him because of love for you and for me. His intention was so indescribable because the Son of God, the Lamb of glory, came not to be worshipped by kings. He came not to be adored by shepherds. His intention was not to be served, but it was to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. His nature was indescribable. His intention is indescribable. Finally, I'm closing with this. The final reason I believe Paul said the gift of God is simply indescribable is the result of that gift. Are you going to receive any gifts today or tomorrow that will forever change your life? Will you, will you get a gift maybe today or tomorrow that is going to forever leave you different from the way you were? Before you receive that gift? Probably not. But do you know that's exactly what happened when you received the gift of the Son of God? Here's what 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a brand new person. The old life is gone, and a new life is here. Can I tell you, my life, church, has forever been changed. How many would say that with me? My life has forever been changed because of that one gift. See, I was bound by the chains of darkness and sin. I had no hope or peace of mind. My sins, they were as scarlet. 
But he washed them as snow. And he opened up my blinded eyes. Now my soul does rejoice. Because I've made God my choice. I've got love, peace, and everything else I need. And now my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Can't you see what he's done for me? How do you describe a gift that forever changes your life? How do you describe a gift that, according to Ephesians, it bestows upon you every spiritual blessing? That when you receive this gift, the Bible says you also receive redemption and the forgiveness of your sins. How do you describe a gift that the Bible says the results of having received this gift are this. You become sealed with the Holy Spirit. You know the mystery of God's will and purpose for your life. And you experience the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. What an indescribable, what an inexpressible gift that we have received. And the greatest gift of all time, I'm going to tell you folks, the greatest gift you can receive this Christmas will not be wrapped in paper and laying under your Christmas tree. But the greatest gift was wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And here's the good news, my friend. You don't have to describe him. You just have to accept him. And the result will be your life will be forever changed and your heart will forever worship. Watch this. Would you stand to your feet this morning? I'm going to ask you if you will, just right where you are, would you just bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment? And I want to offer this invitation to you today. I don't know if perhaps maybe there's somebody here this morning that would say, you know what, Pastor, I have never received that gift in my life. I've filled my life with a lot of things, with a lot of material possessions, but that one gift of God's Son, that truly the only gift that has the power to transform and to change my life, I've never received. And you be here today and you say, but I, I want to leave today knowing that I have said yes to the King, that I've said yes to that baby in a manger that I have accepted his purpose for my life, and that's to seek me out and to save me right where I am. See, he loves you just as you are, but he loves you enough to refuse to leave you that way. He wants to change you. He wants to save you. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I need to receive that gift, either for the first time or maybe as a, a rededication of my life to him, but I know I need Christ Jesus in my heart in a fresh way. Nobody looking around. Would you just slip up your hand this morning? God bless you. I see your hand. Anybody else today that would say, that's me, Pastor. I, I need to know that, God bless you, sweetheart. I see your hand. I need to know that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Could we all just pray this prayer together this morning? Would you say, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know the reason you came was to save me from my sin. So I'm asking you today, this Christmas Eve morning, to come into my heart, to be the Lord of my life, Forgive me of my sin and help me to live for you all the days of my life. I accept the greatest gift of all time 
And that is the salvation of my soul. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for coming for me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Our prayer for you is that you have a joyous and a blessed Christmas Eve today and a Christmas day tomorrow. And that you will always remember as you open every gift, perhaps today or tomorrow, as you open those gifts, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will remind you of the greatest gift of all time and indescribable, inexpressible, too wonderful for words, the gift of the Son of God, Jesus, that came to a manger to save his people from their sins. Thank God for a gift like that. It'll change your heart and change your life. We love each and every one of you. I'm praying for you this week. Terry, we're praying for Michelle, recovering from surgery. We're praying for Joe Davis. My heart this morning, praying for Brandon. I know he's possibly facing some surgery. Ralph, we're praying for you and for your family. Passing of your mom. What a promise we have. That this is not goodbye. But one of these days, we'll stand around the throne of God with all of our loved ones. And we'll worship him for a timeless eternity. Is anybody looking forward to that day, church? Man, that's why Jesus came to make it possible. We can be together forever in heaven. I'm going to invite our associate pastor, Joni, to come up. I believe she's going to dismiss us in prayer. But we love you. Merry Christmas from our family to yours. God bless you. dismiss in prayer. We have a little something that we want to do, but first of all, can we thank the Lord for that awesome message that our pastor brought to us this morning? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my poor Miss Alicia. Where is she? Miss Alicia, would you come up front? You guys come up here. Gabby's coming too. <laughs> we are truly blessed here. Come on, Zoe. Yes. We are truly blessed here at the Fairlawn Church of God. Are we not? To have the pastor and his wife and their two children. We love you guys so much and appreciate you. We don't even have the words to say how grateful we are for the gift that we have at the Fairmont Church of God, that God has given us an awesome man of God, an awesome woman of God, and two beautiful children. We love you guys so much, and we have a gift to present to you from the church. Pastor Marcus, this is yours. And Jack, you come up here and help me with this. It's heavy. <laughs> for our first lady, Miss Alicia, from the church. Okay. I stick in front of her. I don't know if she, might, she might not want to hold that thing either. Okay. See, I'm old. When you're young, you can hold that kind of stuff. But can, we give, uh, can we give them a hand and say thank you so much? We appreciate and love them so much. Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas. We're going to do a closing prayer now at this time. You just bow your heads. Father, it has been so good to be in your house today. And we thank you for that message that has been given to us. Oh, we thank you for the awesome, wonderful gift that you are, Lord. And we just praise you, Lord, and thank you that we have the privilege to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Go with each one of us, Lord, and keep your hand upon us, Father. We ask this in your precious holy name. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Amen. God bless you all. Merry Christmas.